What year are we in according to the Bible? An intriguing question, isn't it? Today, as we continue to move through the second day of the calendar year 2024, we find ourselves pondering what might seem like a peculiar thought. We live our lives structured by the framework of the Gregorian calendar. This internationally recognized method is our universally accepted standard for marking the passage of days, months, and years. But have you ever stopped to consider that this might not be the sole way of measuring time? It's an intriguing concept, yet there are other techniques of time measurement, some of which are deeply embedded in centuries of tradition and religious practices. Among these alternatives is, is the biblical calendar, often referred to as the Hebrew or Jewish calendar. This ancient method of chronology doesn't rely solely on the movements of the sun, as many modern calendars do, nor does it depend entirely on the moon's cycles. Instead, it cleverly combines these two natural phenomena, creating what is often described as a lunisolar calendar system. This unique framework results in each year containing 12 or, on occasion, 13 months, depending on whether it's a leap year or not. The way comprehend time, a concept that seems so straightforward in the Gregorian calendar, is fundamentally different when seen through the lens of the biblical calendar. Instead of counting years from a significant universally recognized historical event, like the birth of Christ in the Gregorian calendar, the biblical chronology starts counting years from what it perceives as the creation of the world. However, pinpointing the current biblical year is not as straightforward as one might think. To calculate the biblical year, one must delve deeply into the scriptures, tracing the genealogical lineages mentioned in the Bible right back to the very first humans, Adam and Eve. By summing up the ages of people mentioned in the Old Testament at the birth of their offspring and including some historical events, scholars have attempted to determine the year. Yet, it's not an easy task. This is because there is no universal agreement on how to interpret the scriptures and calculate the biblical year accurately. Different interpretations and assumptions made while reading the biblical text have resulted in a diverse range of proposed years. Some scholars suggest that according to the Bible, we are currently in the year 5784, while others argue that we're in the year 6024. The considerable discrepancy between these two figures is a testament to the complexity and subjectivity of biblical chronology. Also, another difference between the Gregorian calendar and the biblical calendar lies in the concept of the new year. The Gregorian calendar marks January 1st as the start of a new year, a day that is celebrated across the globe with brilliant fireworks and widespread festive cheer. Contrary to this, the biblical calendar recognizes two New Year's Days each year, one in the fall, which marks the beginning of the agricultural cycle, known as Rosh Hashanah, and one in the spring, which marks the start of the religious cycle, known as Nisan. This unique concept of having two New Year's Days in the biblical calendar is reflective of its origins in an agrarian. Moreover, it also showcases its deep ties to religious observances. The fall new year, Rosh Hashanah, correlates with the start of the agricultural cycle, while the spring new year, Nisan, aligns with the commencement of the religious cycle. This duality serves to emphasize the integral role of the biblical calendar in both the practical and spiritual lives of the people who follow it. This elaborate system of system of timekeeping, deeply ingrained in religious and historical traditions, reminds us of the diversity in human culture. It underlines how our understanding and perception of time can widely differ across various societies and eras. Such differences are shaped by an array of factors such as geography, religion, societal norms, and many others. In a nutshell, the biblical calendar differs remarkably from the modern Gregorian calendar in three main respects. First, it follows a lunar solar system, resulting in years with varying lengths. Second, it measures time from what it believes to be the creation of the world, leading to an extensive range of scholarly interpretations regarding the current year. Finally, it recognizes two New Year's Days, reflecting its agricultural and religious significance. As we keep moving forward in the year 2024 according to the Gregorian calendar, it's intriguing to realize that our perception of time is but one of many. Time indeed is a multifaceted concept with a myriad of interpretations. And who knows, according to the Bible, we might be traversing through the year 5784 or even 6024. Now doesn't that put a different spin on things? If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We unravel mysteries like these every week. Dive into the fascinating world of biblical chronology with us. Stay tuned for more.